number one. I'm going to leave that there for now. Let's see what else we can find. Mm -hmm. Well, see, we can't do that because we did that yesterday. Oh, this is going to get tricky after a while. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's have a look. Number two. Aha, uh -huh. and I'm not going to let you see what's inside. What else can we find? Aha, uh -huh. that's why I needed the knife. Number three. Oh dear. Number four. And five, actually. Oh, there's no bones around here. Okay. Well, let's do the first five. And six. Oh dear, did it blow away? Oh dear. What do I start? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start with the one I'm gonna put back first. The termites ate the whole inside. Now I've made a mess in the car. Oh, that's okay. Can you see that there in there, Brian? Right in there. So we've got a pair of, actually not a pair. So it looks like this is a violin spider, a female. And just behind her, can you see a slightly pale, paler looking spider? Now that looks to be the male and his bee expired. So it looks like the female has actually eaten him. Now that is not uncommon in spiders. So after mating, uh, if the male can't sneak away quickly, they often get eaten by the females. So very, very cool. This is the most venomous spider. And we, one of the most venomous spiders, but they are very shy and retiring. And they've got very small mouth parts. So you really have to really have to try hard to be bitten. And this is the wonderful thing. Now, that's number one. Number two is, in here as well, do you see, do you see that little pale thing there? Now, there's another spider. It looks like a type of jumping spider or crab spider that has been caught by the violin spider and eaten. And the most amazing thing, when you start looking a little bit closer, you start seeing other things. That's one, two, now number three. Now, I didn't see that initially. There's a little stick insects. Very, very cool. So I didn't see that. A little stick insect. And uh, probably trying to avoid being eaten at the moment, so that's why crawling under a log. Normally when they're out mating, they actually do have wings, but we can't really see them in there now. So they are able to fly it between different spots. Okay, let's put the spiders and the stick insects back where we found them. Oh dear, they keep blowing away. It's fine, I'll find some more now. Oh no, there's some there. Now, this is number four and number five. Isn't that an absolutely fantastic color? Uh, it almost looks like it's rusted. And uh, that's the color russet, and it's a russet bush willow. Now, the main thing I want to chat about here is two things. Firstly, why they keep blowing away. they designed to blow away. That's how the seeds are dispersed. Now, let's see if, no, I don't think there's enough wind to catch it. Now, you see, basically working like a sail, 
Oh, the wind's picking up on, on cue. Let's see if the others are, are better suited to rolling. That one looks like it's been a bit damaged. Doesn't have the nice wheels yet. So they're actually designed to catch the wind and on strong windy days, they can roll for a couple of hundred meters away from where they have a, been spawned. Now, the more interesting thing about this, specifically because we're in a drought, and what number we are, this is five there. And, and specifically because we're in a drought, is uh, the Herero people, who are indigenous to Botswana and Namibia, and they're great cattle men. And it's, it's a very dry part of Africa, so drought is not uncommon up there. And these particular seeds are one of the lifesavers to those cattle men. And they are collected, and if I have a, even if I look on the ground here, I can see a whole bunch. So the little herd boys are actually sent out to collect and specifically russet bush willow seeds. They seem to be far more nutri nutritious uh, than the other bush willows. And one of the reasons the Latin name for this tree is Combritum herensis is because of the Herero's people's use of this as cattle fodder in a time of drought. So they'll collect masses of these seeds to feed cows at a time of drought. Now, I have seen buffalo eat them, and I have seen buffalo eat them this year, which is very unusual. So obviously there's something to that. Number six continues on with the exact same seed. Now, here's my knife again. The uh, herorensis is also, apparently, I've never tasted it myself, but if you open up the seed, I'm not going to taste it now. So, of course, the wings are the dispersal mechanism. The seed is actually on the inside. There we go. It smells quite nice. So there we go. That's an that's actual seed. Now, apparently those roasted and ground make very good coffee substitute and uh, has a similar effect as stimulant uh, as coffee. I'm not sure how effective it is. Brian, do you see what I see? Oh, oh, can't. Oh, there we go. Well, there's, there's an ant that came outside of the inside of that, um, uh, that seed. So obviously other little insects can get in. And I think if we look quite carefully on that, it looks like those ants have actually been chewing on the, on the seed. Isn't that amazing? So that, that, that actually, that worked. That worked. What's that number? Seven. That was number seven. Sure. And I only came with five. See, that's the amazing thing if you start looking a bit closer. Well, let's let them disperse to the wind. Aha. Number eight. Do you know what that is, Brian? I do. What is it? Exactly. Well done, Brian. So the acacia negrescence, or the knob thorn, uh, produces, specifically when they're young, these big knobs. Uh, and it's actually a modified thorn. So you can actually see the old hook, tip of the hook thorn there. So it's a mod modified thorn that the tree will produce. Oh, this one always gets glob globulin. So it's a hormone, a growth hormone that you get in plants. And they will pump it into a thorn to create an almond knob to protect them from different things feeding. So there we go, the knob thorns knob. And it is just a modified thorn. So it would have started life off as just a tiny little hook thorn and then the tree would have produced globulin, the hormone into it, and it would have caused it to become this armored knob. And you, I love the way if you look at it carefully, you can see the sort of growth stages in the little layers as they go up. Hmm, there we go. That was number eight. Uh, we've got nine, 10, 11, and 12 all in one branch if we wanted them, you know, but I'm not going to spoil you too much. I'm only going to give you 10. So this is a, often called an apple leaf, uh, but the common name I grew up knowing it as is a rain tree. So particularly in this time of the year, when you don't get as bigger ones here in the Sabi Sands as we used to get in Botswana. There are some in Kruger. Now there's a couple. Okay, quickly across to the lions. 